So, some of you, of course, may have noticed over the past, well, couple of weeks, when we've been covering the Tory party leadership contest, sometimes, sometimes, not too often, and it doesn't get discussed that much uh, by either some of the uh, potential Tory leadership hopefuls or to a great extent in the comments when we've, uh, you know, covered them about the problem of finances, of course, at Tory HQ. And today, finally, we are covering the extent of the crisis at the finances of the Tories. Because apparently, according to some of these insiders that we're going to see at the moment, the Tory party might be absolutely broke. Because donations have completely dried up. That this long leadership contest that was at least hoped for that, you know, would, should we say, solve some of the problems that the Tories have, have been having, but of course, as we've covered, as we've talked about it, it solved none of the problems, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, you know, they'd hope donations would, would roll back into the party. Um, no, hasn't, hasn't been happening, hasn't been happening. So as a result, we are now seeing, and what we're about to see in a moment, the Tory party in dire straits. And remember, in any of the upcoming elections or, or things like that, or by-elections, this means the Tories are just not going to have the money to run an effective campaign. And that, that will hurt a lot. Because we do talk about money in politics, and money is important, because remember, it's money that pays for your leaflets, your stuff to do your phone banking, sending out uh, emails, leaflets, you know, advertisements, etc. You need money to be able to campaign. And if you ain't got the money, you aren't going to be campaigning as effectively as you should be. So this is going to be a massive, massive hole in the Tory party's ability to campaign. So we're going to get into this, but oh boy, troubled times ahead for whoever takes over as Tory leader, because I'll tell you what, this is their first priority that they have to solve. If they can't solve this, it spells a lot of trouble in the future for them. So before we do get into this, please do remember to click on the like, share, and subscribe button. Down below, there are links to the Patreon page, the one-off station called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee, the YouTube thank you button, and of course, as always, there is the Pony Club down below as well. So let's crack on into this then. This is coming from the I, with the title of Broke Tories, Slashing Jobs at HQ as Donations Dry Up, Insiders Say. So the Conservative Party is running out of money. What wonderful words to hear. <laughs> so, in the wake of its worst ever election defeat, the party's top officials are now scrambling to get its finances in order before they can be begin the work of rebuilding the party. Multiple insiders have told the eye that the last half of the staff at party headquarters are likely to go through redundancies. So, half of the staff at the party HQ are likely to go. That's a lot, potentially a lot of staff right there. There are also concerns that an already acute situation is now being worsed by the long leadership contest and donations that might have helped the Tory uh, hold off the party's financial crisis are instead going to rival leadership campaigns. So this long contest that they decided to have is actually negatively affecting the Tory party, which is, again, fantastic to see, because apparently this is what they wanted, this long campaign. But if any of the contenders for the Tories' top job have a plan to address this issue, they are so far keeping it close to their chest. 
like I say, no one's addressing this, but it is a massive issue that the party is going to have. And whichever one takes over, they're going to have to try and solve this problem pretty sharpish. It wasn't supposed to be this way. Uh, as, as recently as the start of this year, the Conservative Party bosses thought they had an advantage over Labour when it came to finances. Even they, even when they were behind in the polls. But when things started to go wrong soon afterwards, with problems spiralling down during to a difficult election campaigns, the donations tend to flow toward the party that is now likely to win election and then from form the next government. Donors want to try and improve their access to people in power rather than those in opposition. But the speed at which the funds dried up appeared to have taken Rishi Sunak and then the Tory chairman, Richard Holden, entirely by surprise, according to party insiders. Oof. So, the Conservative Party's 2023 accounts show that it had built up a considerable election war chest, were uh, receiving almost 60 million in income, including 35 million pounds from donations, 10 million from people's wills, and 6 million from the party conference, all allowing the carryover for an 18 million surplus to spend in the year's general election. Labour, by contrast, ran a small deficit of 1 million. Given that the apparent very strong financial position, back in November of 2023, the Conservative Party quietly and subtly increased the limit on what parties could spend during a campaign on a general election, from little over 19 to 35, not the actions of a party that expected to be outgunned financially during the contest. Things then started to fall apart in the run-up to the election. In March, the businessman Frank Helster who donated over £15 million to the Conservative under Rishi Sunak's premiership, became embroiled in a racism row after uh, remarking that a black Labour MP, uh, Diane Abbott, should be shot. And of course, I think they had to give that back. I don't know if they actually, actually ever kept that money or not. So Sunak also had to accept that those remarks were racist and refused to return any of the nations concerned. And that he did not then comment on whether the party would then refuse donations from Hester in the future. As it transpired, the party had accepted £5 million more from Hester at the time of that scandal that was not yet made public, which was also then retained. But it has received no further donations from him since. The losses of the party's largest individual donor was then compounded by a catastrophic start to the election campaign in which Rishi Sunak then became involved in the row over the leaving the D-Days um, ceremonies early, with several members of his team now alleged to have then placed bets using inside information on the date of the election. All these scandals combined with the party's poor showing in the polls meant that donations collapsed, and across the five weeks of that election campaign, the Electoral Commission figures show the Labour Party raised over £5 for every one the Conservatives managed, totaling uh, 9.5 million to the Tories, uh, sorry, nine sorry, sorry, totaling 9.5 and to the Tories, 1.9 million. By contrast, in 2019, the Conservatives raised 19.4 million pounds in donations versus the 5.4 million for Labour. So as you can see, these are shocking, really shocking numbers when you get into them. So. We are absolutely cash-strapped in this election, and this explains why the party political broadcast one uh, explained ex uh, ex exasperated, referring to the extremely cheap-looking te televised ad campaign put out by the party. The party is basically broke, and the next leader is going to have to fix it, said another senior insider. It is really going to matter who the next chairman is and whether they have any capability to fundraise. Conservative HQ needs a proper fundraiser as a chairman because rebuilding is going to be expensive. And I think they've let go of all the campaign managers, which was a big mistake given the importance of the local elections next year. I mean, imagine that. We've got local elections next year, which are quite important. Going to be a big test for a lot of reasons. But you've let go of every single campaign manager. What what show are they running at CCHQ that they've allowed it to get so bad? <laughs> anyway, 
While, of course, it waits for a new leader, who it now hopes will bring in new funding, the party is having to drastically cut costs, including people on temporary and fixed-terms contracts over the election period. The party staff is now expected to be slashed from 350 to a little over 150, according to another party insider. Wow, that's a lot of staff to lose. That is a lot. To go from 350 down to 150, that's a lot of staff to lose. Another obviously expected saying the core HQ staff to be reduced <laughs> more than 200 to less than 100. Again, so much staff they're having to lose. And all that, remember, is being lost out of the party. Once these people goes, once they go, that's a big knowledge drain. That's a massive knowledge drain from, from the, you know, the party HQ. And businesses... Look at this as well. If you've ever seen when a business has to downsize or, or cut back on staff, sometimes they are have to put in a situation where they're like, right, who can we not afford to get rid of? Because if we lose them, we lose all their knowledge, we lose all their contacts. And sometimes in some businesses, they have no option but to get rid of those types of people. And then things can go catastrophically wrong in some cases. So Getting rid of all these people here, it's oof, it's crazy. So, uh, the party financial woes over its uh, over its officers. So this is this is where it gets interesting. So during Boris Johnson's premiership, Dominic Cummings proposed relocating the party HQ to Leeds. Instead, the Conservatives tried to retain the crippling, expensive party HQ on uh, Matthew Parker Street in Westminster. And added that the second building in West uh, in West York in the West Yorkshire City, insiders claim that the party has now been locked in a deal on the Westminster building with a painfully higher high high rent uh, high rent. Ooh, uh, that's kind of funny. Uh, for the last for at least another two years, insiders say that closing the Lee's outpost was at least one option considered by the contracts. Merely meant the party was now committed until twenty twenty six. So, the leadership campaigns, however, do seem now to be unwilling to address any of these issues of party finances, at least publicly. None of the leadership campaigns have responded to any queries from I. Multiple insiders, including some working on the different campaigns, have said that leadership candidates were instead trying to keep their powder dry when it came to party finances, as none would actually wish to offer up potential donors or even solutions that a rival them might steal. <laughs> God, they are so they are so screwed whoever they elect i mean bear in mind if kimmy bad not gets the final two it's hers to win and honestly at the moment if the rumors are going to be true that they are going to block kimmy bad knock at the final four and not let her get to the final two then it looks like it will be robert jerrick this again robert jerrick beats everyone else and then you have an absolutely terrible leader you've got a man whose charisma could only match, you know, damp wallpaper, and a man who also potentially has a lot of scandals following him as well. Yeah, good choice, guys. Good choice. Anyway, uh, instead, they are now trying to focus on raising over £200,000 200, in contributions to the Tory party coffers desperately need from each candidate. One suggested that the millionaire uh, MP Mel Stride might actually contribute personally given his wealth. But otherwise, no donors are giving to the party itself because they want to see if their guy or gal gets in. Donors for now are, of course, staying uh, uh, aligned to the campaigns. The conservative donors and businessman Michael uh, Michael Tory is now running the finances for Tom Tugendhat, while former cabinet minister David Meller is trying to do the same for Kimmy Badnock. Essentially, this means that until the leadership election is over, any donor money that gets raised goes to leadership campaigns rather than to the party itself. This means there are now very scant sums of money to keep the party going until November. And another party insider said, this was yet another reason why the long readership race was an idiotic mistake. Uh, and yet, they wanted a long campaign. We heard them so much 
talking, saying why they want a long campaign, why a long campaign would be best rather than a short campaign. And yet, here we are going for the long campaign. I have to wonder now if we'll see Bob Blackman come out from the 1922 committee and say that he's cutting the campaign short by a couple of weeks. I, I have to wonder if if this might happen. Um, so while, of course, it now waits for a new leader, it does hope will bring in party funding. The party is now having to drastically, drastically cut costs. Expecting personnel department departures are said to go well beyond the usual uh, cylind uh, cylindrical post-election trim, and in it takes some experienced staffers. The Conservative Party did not respond to the detailed series of, of queries uh, regarding its finances or spending. And for now, there is very little to do for the party officials trying to keep things going, but for wait for a new leader and hope they have a plan to fix it for the party's financial black hole, even if they are not saying so publicly. Oh boy. Um, yeah, that doesn't sound like any kind of trouble at all. <laughs> Given the fact you have Honestly, the people who win, who have shown absolutely no capability of, of any type of leadership when they were in charge, this can only go, I think, one way. Hopefully, hopefully, incredibly badly. <laughs> I Oh, it would be amazing to see, like, early next year in the Tory parties, like, um... We're broke. We're having to file for bankruptcy. <laughs> Bear in mind, it was not too long ago, not too long ago, going into just before the election was announced, there were a lot of conservative commentators saying that, oh, Labour's going to go broke. Labour's having to do all these, you know, uh, fights from like the Corbyn era in court, it's going to bankrupt the party. We'll be we'll be sitting pretty, guys. <laughs> Gee, what a what a difference a year makes from now. Running back, wild times, wild times indeed. We do live in, but there you go. That's the absolutely dire straits the Conservative Party is in, and. Bear in mind, people are going to ask, what happens if it goes broke? Well, they will have to make a lot of difficult financial decisions. But this will massively affect the party, massively so. Um, it means the party funding, the, the HQ, the system of it will have to get smaller. And that will drastically affect it. Drastically affect it. It means... For example, in the upcoming, you know, next local elections, it might be they have to turn around to some candidates and say, you have to put up the the, the stump cost yourself. We're not going to put it up because we can't afford to put it up because we've got other people who we think might win or get the required vote percentage so that at least we can get our money back from it. I mean, honestly, bad things, bad things could indeed come from this. But maybe we'll talk about that another time, you know, if it all, all happens. But yeah, how honestly it has come to this from where we started off in January and here we are in September. I'll tell you what, this year's sum up, round up, end of year video it's going to be wild. It's going to be it's going to be a wild ride. So, if you do want to see that of course, uh that is only going to be available to the Patreon members and of course the Pony Club members as well. So, sign up to that and you get access to all the other content that I've made as well for those. Uh and of course, don't remember to click on the side uh, and the um uh, subscribe button, the share button, the like button, all that stuff. Give it a good click and of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.